message that came over was confidence. This manifesto sets out the real radical policies for the next parliament. We take nothing for granted. We shall work extremely hard, as we always do. We believe we shall have a majority. At the start of her campaign for a third term, Mrs Thatcher needs to convince the country that she hasn't run out of ideas. But pictures come first in this campaign. The press manfully resisting the temptation to tip the pyramid over. That finished, Mrs Thatcher, accompanied by a slightly expanded version of the A-team which wrote the manifesto, laid out her stall. If anyone hoped to attack the Conservative Party for running out of ideas after two periods of office, this manifesto puts paid to that. It sets out the real radical policies for the next Parliament. One of the main themes, she said, was power for the people. And this idea of taking power away from local authorities and giving it to the individual runs through the manifesto, most notably on education. To improve standards, a national core curriculum is to be introduced so that all 5 to 16-year-olds study the same subjects. At the same time, school governors and head teachers will be given control over their budgets. And to bypass local councils, schools will be allowed to opt out of local education authority control. In London, whole boroughs will be able to opt out of the Inner London Education Authority, all highly controversial changes. You increase uh, the inequality in the system. You benefit a few by giving them a chance to opt out of a system. The middle class it scores expand, the sink scores go down further. You mustn't just think that, that, that people who live in these areas haven't got the same feelings, the same aspirations, the same hopes, the same determination for their children. Of course they have. They're not to be pushed around. Housing is another area in which Mrs Thatcher wants to give more power to the individual and the market. In the private sector, they're going to try to encourage more private letting by introducing new forms of tenancy, which will allow landlords to charge nearer the market rent. In the public sector, council tenants will be given the right to form co-ops and opt out of local authority control. In run-down areas, housing action trusts, appointed by central government, will take over housing from the council. But the biggest change will be replacing the rates with a new community charge, which will mean rises for some. Obviously, a single person will pay less because hitherto most single people have been paying for a household if they're in a single household. So there's those changes to family numbers. Equally, five earners living in a house are going to pay much more than they've paid before, and that is what everybody wanted us to do. On trade unions, too, the Tories are proposing further measures to strengthen the power of the individual member and so weaken the power of the union. It's proposing pre-strike ballots and protection for members who refuse to join a strike. The closed shop is also to be further weakened. And in a clause which could have been designed to deal with Arthur Scargill, it says all members of trade union governing bodies will have to be elected once every five years by secret ballot. It basically is following the Tory philosophy of bringing the unions more and more under state control. But the most important element really is the introduction of a trade union ombudsman a legal beaver who will be able to initiate action against the trade unions through the court by himself without waiting for complaints to come to him. On jobs and the economy, the Tories repeat their commitment to getting the basic rate of tax down to 25p. They also promise to expand existing job experience and training programmes so that anyone under 18 is guaranteed either a job or a training place. If young people don't take the offer up, they will lose their benefit. There are also new guarantees of help for the long-term unemployed but no target for getting unemployment down. If anyone has a genuine recipe for unemployment, then I wish they would put it into operation, but they know, as we know, you can't give targets for getting unemployment down specifically because it's business that creates jobs. On Home Affairs, the manifesto promises more police on the streets, stiffer sentences and new immigration laws to make it more difficult for people to settle here. With the manifesto also promising new moves on privatisation, a tough line on defence and continued control over public spending, the Tories were essentially offering a development of existing policies. The message they wanted to get over today was that they were competent but not complacent. The message that came over, though, was confidence. 
there was no question of the programme being negotiable with the Alliance in the event of a hung parliament. Uh, we do not expect to be put in that position. We shall work extremely hard until the end of polling day, as we always do. We take nothing for granted. Uh, we should, in fact, place our own policy before Parliament, assuming that in any event we, we believe we shall have a majority, but we believe that we should be in any event the largest party. We should place our own programme before Parliament for the consideration of Parliament, whether to vote for it or against it. But how much of that Parliament would she be around for? Our first thing <laughs> is to win a third term. I expect to be very fit towards the end of that time. But those decisions will have to be taken then, not now.